Welcome to our review on feeding relationships. So when we're looking at feeding relationships, what we're really looking at are food chains. And a food chain just shows what organisms actually eat. So it's going to show the flow of energy from one organism to the next. And the way we represent that flow of energy is by using an arrow. And remember that the arrow will always point the direction the energy is moving in. One term that we might find associated with food chains is something called the trophic level. And any time we're talking about a trophic level, we're just talking about a feeding level within the food chain. Hopefully you remember from lower down the school that when we're writing food chains, you write the names of the organisms. Between each of the organisms, we put an arrow in. And remember that arrow has to point in the direction the energy is flowing in. So it should point from the grass to the rabbit, from the rabbit to the fox. We can't have it going the other way. If you put the arrow pointing from the fox to the rabbit, basically what you're saying is that the rabbit is going to be eating the fox because the energy is going from the rabbit to the fox, which we know clearly isn't true because we don't see hordes of rabbits hiding behind a bush waiting to jump out on a fox and slowly devour it. So make sure you get your arrow the right way round. There are a few key terms we need to remember associated with our food chains. First one is a producer. Now producers are organisms that produce their own food and the best example are plants. Your primary consumer is the one that's going to be eating the producer, secondary consumer eats the primary consumer and so on. We've also got these three terms that describe what they're actually eating. So we've got a herbivore which only eats plants, a carnivore only eats meat and an omnivore will eat both meat and plants. There is another type of food chain called a detrital food chain. Now what we find here is that these food chains will start with dead material or waste and what they do is they involve two other feeding types. We've got the detritivores which eat dead material and the decomposers which decay the bodies of other organisms. Go careful not to say that decomposers eat the bodies of other organisms because they don't, okay? They just decay the bodies of other organisms. So detritivores eat dead material, decomposers decay the bodies of other organisms. Now within any given habitat, what we're going to find is that there's not just one food chain. There are lots of different food chains, but they link together. So in order to actually show this interlinking of all the different food chains, what we can create is something called a food web. So at the bottom there, I've given you an example of one of these food webs. So what we can see is that one food chain would be grass, gazelle, lion, vulture. We could also have grass, gazelle, vulture, grass, zebra, vulture, grass, zebra, lion, vulture. So we've got all those different food chains that link together to make the food web. The last thing we really need to consider is how scientists actually work. So the first thing we need to do is come up with a hypothesis. So we'd make some simple observations and come up with our theory about what's happening. Step two would be to test our hypothesis. So we carry out further observations or experiments to see if what we thought was right. And then a third and final stage is to check whether the evidence actually supports it. So what we're looking at there is, does the data we've collected actually support the hypothesis we came up with, or do we need to go back to step one with a new hypothesis again?